Welcome. Can everybody hear me? I'm Marty Berniker, and I'm the director of Speak Up. And on behalf of our founder, Marty Gillen, our entire program staff, and our program partner, Mitch Green, we want to welcome you to our first ever Sports Speak Up. Also, we want to say special thanks to the Haverford School for hosting us here tonight. Thank you. What was so interesting in looking at the registrations is that we have a lot of people here tonight that are new to speak up. And so we'd like to take a moment and to show you a video that will really introduce you to what speak up is and how it works. where you could talk about topics ranging from um, depression and stress and anxiety to um, drugs and alcohol. Gender identity, self-esteem, peer relationships, sex. As a parent, I like Speak Up because it brings the parents and the child together to discuss issues and resolve the problem. Just be able to talk and to express your concerns, your feelings, to share those issues and concerns with others um, it is you know, certainly one of the dominant criteria for success in life. We want our youth to have the kind of authentic relationships with their family and with their friends that will enable them to arrive in adulthood safe, healthy, and prepared. And we believe that the best way to do that is to create a culture of communication in our homes, in our schools, where it's okay to talk about things that are tough to talk about. We go into a school, we form a leadership team. We have four meetings with that leadership team. In those pre-meetings, they're picking their topics. They're getting really comfortable talking about these topics that they feel are critical in their lives. It culminates into a nighttime event that all of the youth educators and parents are invited to. The people who come in and present for Speak Up are knowledgeable. Not only are they really good at presenting, by then, that team is really at ease in talking about these tough topics, and that happens in the breakout group. But the goal is really the interaction of the group. What happens is people be nervous in the beginning, they be nervous to kind of talk, to kind of share, and then suddenly will open up, you know, this really, this part of stress was really difficult for me. My mom's like constantly telling me, like, do this, like, you're far behind, you're procrastinating, and I feel like, I know what I want and I know when my deadlines are and I'm going to do them when it's right for me. I'm afraid if you stand up too much and, you know, they do miss deadlines and, you know, was I not there? So that balance is so hard in what we are. Someone else will take a little deeper and someone else will take a little deeper. And all of a sudden you've got a real, real bonding. People. My mom was stressed because she asked me, it's like, oh, did you do your summer work? I was like, yeah, I did it. And she's like, oh, well, tell me some, some things about it. And I started talking, she's like, just please stop. I had a stressful day, and I already know whatever you're going to say, I'm not going to like. I'm going to get mad at you for no reason, so just stop. The students are never with their own parents. They're always in a different breakout group. And I think that's when the aha moment occurs because the parents actually get a chance to hear what the students have to say and what the students are feeling which gives them a perspective of what their own child may be thinking. On the flip side, uh, the parents get a chance to tell the students how they're feeling and what their concerns are. I have a son who's very similar to you, who puts it on himself, and it concerns me sometimes, and he's very driven. I see that the opportunity to be able to actually talk in a real, honest, and meaningful way has the potential to sometimes save lives. I was the type of mom where academics were important to me. And I think I put a lot of pressure on Christopher because he was in the honors program 
And I remember when you went off, one day you were doing biology, and I thought he was going to commit suicide. He ran upstairs, and he just started destroying his room because of the pressure. And speak of helped him come to me, we were able to talk about it. And I think I saved my son's life because I was at the table. I just want the best for my son. That's why I don't speak up and that's why I love my son because now we can talk about any and everything when we're proud. I really felt at home when it came to the breakout sessions. That's where I could really open up about my personal experiences with depression and when I shared my stories, others started to share their story. It gives you the chance to really help yourself while also helping others. There are moments that my parents aren't trusting me. It puts me under a lot more stress because I feel as though even if... You simply learn something each time you go. I just have a better appreciation of the life that she lives that uh, I did not have prior to my experiences with Speak Up. I had gone to speak up with um, one of my sons and we got in the car and about two minutes before we pulled into my neighborhood, all of a sudden, my son started opening up and it was great. It's one of those moments where a parent doesn't want to move, they just want to sit there because they don't want to do anything that's going to stop the talking. We have some early research that's very exciting. It really shows that Speak Up is having the impact that we want it to have. And what our research showed is that our kids have crossed the line. No matter which demographic Speak Up was serving, that those kids were having a lot of stress in their lives. And what we have to do is reach out to all kids in order to get all kids prepared to thrive. One of the things that I'm really pleased with is to watch students, and not necessarily the loudest students, become leaders in the community. It's something that they care about. My family does, especially during the school. You just can't imagine a more important mission. And I've gotten to see personally the impact that Speak Up has on young people um, and their families. We're trying to prepare kids to be healthy 35-year-olds who are going to lead us into the future. What could be more important than someone who can manage stressors in their life and not reach for those negative coping strategies. Through teaching the skills to parents to listen, when kids feel heard and seen, they thrive. We're at a really exciting time in our organizational history because what started with one courageous young man and family and went to one school and is now in 37 schools in the region, public schools, private, suburban, urban, middle and high schools and the model works in all those different settings and i tell my friends and anybody that's willing to listen that we have an incredible generation of kids they really care they're compassionate they connect and they are starting to communicate i love being a part of speak up because i get to help parents realize how their kids are feeling it just gave me a sense of like man people do care about me I'm loved. No one's in the room, everyone's in it together. So it's a wonderful experience. Thank you. I hope you enjoyed that. So there's really three things we want you to remember about Speak Up. The first is that we think everybody in this room has a shared goal. We want our young people to arrive at adulthood <laughs> safe, healthy, and prepared, and to enjoy the journey. Secondly, we also believe that Speak Up is based on this really simple principle. If you can be honest about the reality of your life, no matter what it is, big issues or little concerns, you can find support, you can find solutions, and you can help other people along the way. And you have to make a decision to be known. Because no matter how close you are to people, no matter how good your relationship is, they can't know what you're thinking or feeling at all times. And so you have to make a decision to speak up and be known. And the third most important thing is that Speak Up works. 90% of participants tell us that as a result of Speak Up, they realize that they're not alone and they're more willing to ask for help. Now there are no guarantees in life, but realizing that you're not in it alone and being willing to ask for help is probably the best insurance policy. So when we began talking with Mitch about Speak Up on Sports, actually in the spring, we thought it was a great idea for really two reasons. One is, 
We hear the kids in breakout uh, sessions in all the speak ups that we have talk about how stressful sports are for them and balancing being a student athlete. And secondly, because all the issues that affect all students affect athletes as well. And yet we believe there are some additional barriers to athletes speaking up. So we thought it was a great idea, but we weren't sure. So in true speak up fashion, we went out and talked to a lot of students. We talked to parents. We talked to coaches. We had a great adult leadership committee that helped us plan. And we had student leaders here in the red shirts that came and met and planned and, and validated the concept as well. And so we are so excited to welcome you to your Speak Up experience. I'd like to introduce tonight's MCs, Riley Dolan from Bonner and Anthony Calvelli from Haverford. Thank you. On behalf of the students, I would like to thank you all for attending tonight. A special thank you to John Nagel, Matt Green, and John Nostrand, who are instrumental in making tonight happen at the Haverford School. I would like to introduce Anna Grace Berniker, Griffin Fleming, Kara DiPiano, and Alec Haas to read Let's Agree, which are the guidelines for this evening. Let's agree to respect the opinions, feelings, and boundaries of others. Let's agree to create a safe, non-judgmental non environment. Let's agree to support each other through the learning process. And let's agree to respect the privacy of others. Let's agree to silence our cell phones. Let's agree to be willing to listen to what other people have to say. Let's agree to speak one person at a time. Let's agree to have fun and continue the conversation. Would the leadership team please stand? For the past few months, our leadership team, those in the red shirts, worked together with Mitch Green and the Speak Up team to prioritize topics impacting high school athletes today. Tonight our goal is to use our leadership skills to encourage open and honest conversation. In our Speak Up Leadership meetings, we are given tools and skills to create a non-judgmental environment for tonight's conversations. One of these powerful communication tools is the 10 and 10 exercise. The 10 and 10 is a process that we can all use to continue the conversation between students parents, and or teachers. There are two ways to use the 10 and 10. You can use this communication tool to highlight best qualities in each other. This gives you an opportunity to acknowledge positive traits about one another, things that we take for granted and don't necessarily hear on a daily basis. The second way to use this tool is for addressing a specific conflict, such as curfew, for example. By using the 10 and 10, it helps take the tension out of discussing a difficult topic so that together, a parent and child can come to an agreement that works for both of them. That being said, I would like to introduce Nina Erickson. Good evening, everyone. My name is Nina Erickson, and tonight I will be talking to you about the 10 and 10. Now, I've had the privilege of about speaking, or speaking about this for the past two years, and each time it's been with my mom. But this time around, I went to my crew coach and the two of us set 10 minutes aside and we did it. Now, at first it was a little scary because she's a very intense person, but at the end it really was beneficial for our relationship. Um, what we talked about was the fact that as a junior, I was elected captain on my crew team, and I had really struggled with the fact that there were seniors who resented the fact that I was captain and they weren't. There was some tension, and I really didn't know how to control the situation seeing as I was a leader and talking to upperclassmen. My coach didn't notice any of the tension that had been going on between us, 
So it was really nice for her to be able to understand what had happened and for me to get to tell her that I was going through something hard and she really did address it with the team in an anonymous way where I really felt more comfortable being a leader on my team. Um, that being said, I would like to say thank you to the entire Speak Up community for establishing this program. It's something that I've had the privilege of coming to for the past two years, and I've had a great time every time I've done it, and it has really revolutionized my high school career, so thank you. Tonight we have eight professional facilitators who are committed to speak up and generously share their time and talents with us. They are Mitch Green, Robert Zeitlin, Jane Goggin, Colleen Philbin, Russell Morris, Holly Cohen, Laurie Friedlander, Marissa Kimmel, and Amy Gross. Again, thank you all for being here. Now I would like to introduce Tasha and Siobhan Green. Hi, my name is Siobhan, and this is my sister Tasha, and we are here to introduce our main speaker tonight, Dr. Green. Dr. Mitchell Green is a clinical and sports psychologist who has been in practice for the past 15 years. He has worked with a wide range of athletes, from professional tennis players, triathletes, and runners, to high school lacrosse players, golfers, and squash players. Dr. Green also works with coaches and parents, who he recognizes as a crucial aspect of an athlete's success. Dr. Green is nationally recognized, and he has his articles featured in numerous magazines and has written chapters in books. He's here to speak to us tonight about the struggles that all athletes, parents, and coaches face on and off the playing field. Please, Please give a warm welcome to our dad, Dr. Mitchell Green. You know who I am. <laughs> it doesn't get better than that. Thank you, girls. And thank you, everybody, for coming. I'm really, I'm really excited and, and I'm touched that, that everyone was able to make time out of their busy schedules, especially the students who are here tonight, because I know how difficult it can be to balance your schoolwork, your sports, and your social life. And I had an idea about what could make tonight really worthwhile for you was if I tell all your parents to let you sleep in tomorrow morning, figuring you're here tonight, you should get some sort of credit for that. I know in our own home, when things get really hectic and time seems at a premium, our, my kids start calculating about when the next time is it that they're gonna be able to get to sleep in. I do know how important it is. But I do hope tonight is worthwhile, even if your parents don't let you sleep in, because it's a low pressure situation, guys, for you to talk freely about what it's like to be a student athlete, and to hear from others what it's like to be a coach, a parent, or an athletic administrator. Before I jump in, I want to make sure to thank the entire Speak Up staff, who I really think, up, think of as more as my Speak Up family. They helped turn my vision into a reality, and I'm so appreciative of that. And I'd also be remiss not to thank my Green Psych family, too, who are here. Amy, Sam, and Dan for really being of great help in the preparation for this evening, so thank you guys. I think I could safely assume that we're all here tonight because like me, your lives are closely connected to sports. A sports fanatic I am, and I'm one who loves ridiculous challenges, sports challenges, like 14-hour endurance races and Ironman triathlons. I'm lucky, I'm lucky enough that I can have a career where I, my work and my passions can be so closely intertwined. Just as a quick history, the first time I even dreamed of being a sports psychologist, I was in graduate school. When I should have been spending time studying stats, I was reading about a New York Yankee second baseman. For some of you parents will remember Chuck Knobloch. Knobloch went from being a league MVP to not being able to accurately throw a ball from second base to first base 
He wound up resorting to throwing the ball underhand. The mental block that he had was so significant and so severe. It was only a few years after he was a league MVP that he was out of the league entirely. I was fascinated. Today I work with a whole range of athletes, from pros to tweens, but it's my work with high school athletes, I must confess, that brings me the most joy. While there are a lot of problems with youth sports, we should really take some time to celebrate the fact that in our survey of high school kids in our area, over 90% of the student athletes report feeling very or extremely satisfied with playing sports. Even though they may be stressed and challenged, and we'll discuss that tonight, I want everyone to know they're happy that they're participating. And parents, you'll be happy to hear that the vast majority of students are happy with the degree of their parents' involvement in their sports. Take that one to the bank. Even more good news, in addition to the obvious physical benefits of sports participation, athletics has been shown to improve cognition and academic achievement. It reduces discipline problems, it increases self-esteem, and as you, all of you know out here, the discipline of training, learning what teamwork's about, following the leadership of your coaches and captains, learning how to lose, as well as how to win, as well as how to win gracefully, these all provide lifelong lessons for athletes. I know they sure did for me. So although I'm about to focus on some problem areas, I want to be sure that in your breakout rooms tonight, which is where the magic happens, you have the time and the space to share what you love about playing and competing. So you may be interested to know how I came up with the idea of Sports Speak Up. I was working with a local coach in the area, and he told me about a high school student who was jealous of her friend because the friend was so calm and so confident on the field. The girlfriend girl said she wished she could be more like her friend, so relaxed, so not worried about outcomes, and able to take the advice of her parents and coaches to just let the game come to her. You know that expression. As it turned out, the friend, you know, the one who was presumably so relaxed, well, she was ready to quit the team because she was so tired of dealing with such a massive case of nerves. The coach really wasn't sure what to do. I suggested that he should gently encourage the girls to share their feelings with each other. And to his credit, he had them both check out the blog of a professional athlete he knew of in their sport who was open enough to discuss her own worries. When these two friends and teammates found out that they were both struggling with fundamentally the exact same issues, they each felt an enormous amount of relief. And that relief showed up in their sports performances as well. What made the difference was that these two girls, full of pride and competitive zeal, had the courage to share more about themselves than they had before. This is exactly what I'm asking you to consider for tonight. Just like in the sports world, breakthroughs are only possible when we're willing to step out of our comfort zone. I'm asking you to think about that tonight. Simply in my, in my own practice, in the groups I run for student athletes, the guys and girls benefit enormously from sharing their experiences with one another. No one can relate to the sports stresses more than your own fellow athlete. So that's a long way of saying for me that why I wanted us all together in one setting, one community of sports people, together to share. And I and strongly encourage you to share. You're not demanded to share, but as you can see from the spirit of the video and from the kids tonight, it's all we can do to encourage you to share. The two girls I was speaking of, like many of you out there, were in direct competition with one another. I know how intimidating that can be at times. However, you may be interested to know that the word competition comes from the Latin word competere, meaning to seek together. I'm here to remind you tonight that the true spirit of the word competition means that it's impossible to discover how good you can be without your competitors trying to whoop you and vice versa. To do your best, you need someone breathing down your neck and they need you. For example, in track and field, no one sets a personal record running on the track by himself or herself. It's only with cooperation, competition, of others that personal records are set. So I'm conscious there's many of you out there who may be trying out for your spring teams. I just thought I'd offer a little quick piece of advice. I would like to tell you that the other girls or guys that are fighting for that spot on the team are folks who you need, 
believe it or not, you need them in order for you to discover exactly all that you can be. We even have some young men who are hoping to make the professional ranks in football. They get it. We had a conversation earlier. They know that only competing against their fellow competitors at the combine will give them a chance to see what they're capable of. If you can shift from feeling threatened by their presence to embracing the competition that they provide, you may find yourself more motivated by the challenge and less preoccupied with the possibility of negative results. So it's real easy for students, parents, and coaches to lose perspective about the games we play. I'm going to talk a little bit about that. First, I want to talk about one of the big distractions I see in my practice so frequently, which is called mind chatter, or I term mind chatter. Mind chatter is that fear-based conversation. It's the one we have consistently with ourselves when it gets closer to game time. You athletes out there know exactly what I'm talking about. This chatter includes a lot of second guessing, thoughts about what might go wrong, what went wrong last time, or what our excuse is gonna be if things fall apart. In other words, it's our laundry list of dangers, doubts, and problems. I can tell you from my work with elite athletes that despite their intensive training, they still have the very same kind of doubts and fears that you have. What if I think, what do I, what's gonna happen if I don't perform as well as I did last time? What if my coach doesn't trust me and isn't going to play me despite all my hard work? What if, what if, what if? Parents and coaches in the audience need to understand that in youth sports, kids' mind chatter is through the roof. It's through the roof. And too much mind chatter equals too little fun. Parents and coaches as well as the students need to be aware that the chatter going on in their heads is real, it's legitimate, it exaggerates what's really going on a thousand times over about what could go wrong, but I want to normalize it tonight. I want to make sure that if your child, your son or daughter, you see them going through routines in their head of what ifs, what ifs, what ifs, they're more normal. I want them to know, and you should know, than you might actually think. There's no mental weakness for having doubts or worries. Speak Up is a place where we can talk about that, where you feel like you're just one of the bunch. It's a fast-moving time for students, and sports psychologists my, like myself teach athletes ways to manage this, manage this chatter, which can help an unbelievable amount on and off the field. I want to give you a quick story about Annie, a swimmer I worked with, and how she handled her chatter. Annie was frustrated because she hadn't figured out how to believe in herself more. Because I know a few things about confidence and about believing yourself and nine chatter, I knew Annie wasn't just going to sit around talking herself into being more self-confident. Her chatter just went in letter. I told Annie that her mind chatter machine was working overtime, and that the next time she identified these thoughts as being from the mind chatter, from that machine, to consider them like water pouring down from a waterfall. Imagine standing under the waterfall, but the water are the doubts, the concerns, the what ifs. Instead of getting drenched by the doubts, I suggested that she just simply take a step back. And by taking this step back, the doubts are still going to come. We can't quite get rid of them in competitive sports. But even though she couldn't stop the waterfall, Annie loved that message that she could avoid being soaked. She said she did it at her next race. She didn't fight the thoughts, but she just watched them fall a bit in front of her. That was her routine before the race, just watch it fall. Sometimes even small suggestions like these can lead to enormous changes. But my point in telling you this is that Annie learned these types of strategies because she was honest with herself and her, and her feelings, and she was kinder to herself afterwards, being able to see that there's nothing wrong with her, and she just needed to accept whatever thoughts came along. She could do well even if she's got a few doubts. She doesn't need to get rid of them in order, or be perfect, in order to compete at the level she wanted to. In the breakouts tonight, let's be honest about what comes up in our chatter. That's a big part of what I hope can get stirred up tonight. I promise you, you're not the only one. In the breakout too, coaches can talk about what they notice, and sometimes they wish they do more about from their kids. It's hard to be a coach. It can be thankless at times. Tonight's an opportunity for coaches for you to ask questions to find out how you can understand better what's happening in the minds of your players. One other problem I'd like to mention here is that sports does take us on this great journey, but too often 
Too often we tend to focus on the destination and not the value of the journey. Remember, you guys know this, but we all do need reminders, that the reason for playing in the first place is in order to get fit, to be part of a team, to improve our skills and abilities, and participate in this entire adventure. It turns out it's not just me saying that. The survey results we gave to the high school kids here and in the community show that what they like most about high school sports is not winning. Winning turned out to be sixth on the list. I'll read you the top five before we get to winning in terms of what high school students said they like most about their sports participation. One, staying in shape, being healthy. Two, sports teaches me to challenge myself. Three, I love being part of a team. Four, sports helps me build better relationships with my friends. Five, sports helps me make new friends. And six, winning. As I've said, most of the frustration and burnout that I see in my practice in sports, as do my colleagues, stems from the stack, stems stems from the fact that students, parents, and sometimes coaches too, focus so exclusively on getting to that destination, on winning, that they forget the purpose of playing. If you're an over, overly frustrated coach, player, or parent, I can guarantee you one thing, you have completely lost sight of the purpose of high school sports. And let tonight be a reminder of really what high school sports is about. Hopefully you'll be able to take that with you when you leave tonight. Before I finish, one more topic. A common theme when I speak to high school athletes is their great concern about the car ride home. As one student said to me, he calls it hell on wheels. <laughs> one of the plaints I keep hearing is that students feel trapped in the car on the way home. They feel that they must discuss the practice or the game even if they don't want to. Particularly because this is an enclosed space and there ain't no way to escape. I suggest that parents always ask their kids whether or not they want to talk about what just happened on the field. After all, home base, including the ride home, needs to be something of a retreat. This should not be the place for a forced interrogation, an extra and often unwanted coaching session, parents, or a rehash of what already may have been a painful loss. I like to say, parents, with regard to the ride home and even thereafter, let them bring the game to you instead of you bringing it to them. In general, my rule is, parents, you should undercoach and overparent. By that, I mean even if you know something about your youngster's sport from your own sports experience, it's not automatically a good idea to play the role of expert unless you're asked. I know firsthand as the parent of three teenagers, all involved in sports, that student athletes already feel like they are constantly performing in school, on the practice field, in games, in competitions. I encourage you then to let the ride home be a respite from all of that pressure. Even if the game's gone well, it doesn't mean that your son or daughter wants to keep talking about it. So this is a case where it's best to lead by following. If you feel you must say something, how about something simple as other sports psychologists had recommended, I just love watching you play. That might be enough. Tonight, the magic that can happen is that conversations such as the one about how to handle car ride homes can happen between and across generations and they can happen at relatively low cost with, relatively, with potentially high gains. So thank you for your attention and let the sharing begin. Thank you, Mitch, for setting the stage to go into our breakout. My name is Ann Berniker. I'm the program coordinator at Speak Up. I just have a couple housekeeping items before you guys leave. Um, I want to again thank the leadership team who gave up their time and their busy schedules to plan tonight, and our adult committee who also um, gave us a lot of time planning. Thank you so much. The professional facilitators, along with the student leadership team, will help guide the conversation in each breakout room. We all want to learn from each other, support each other, and gain perspective while respecting privacy. So please, when you leave tonight, share your stories, but leave out the names. Don't make any connections that will give someone's identity away. 
<coughs> Speak Up encourages open and honest communication where everyone has a voice in a safe, non-judgmental environment. And of course, Speak Up is about the safety and well-being of everyone. Please uh, visit our website for more resources to make a donation and to see our upcoming events. For those parents who are not sleeping in tomorrow with their kids, we have a parent coffee at our office at 8.30 and that's on mental health. So we'd love you to join us. You can look on our website for our location. In a few days, we will be emailing you a brief survey. Please fill it out as your feedback is very important to us, especially since this is a first time event. Towards the end of your breakout, um, we'll give a 10 minute warning and your professional facilitator will start to close the breakout. Please fill out the anonymous exit tickets that they will be giving out to you. If you're in the same breakout as a family member or if you're in a breakout with a coach, we really try hard to keep family separated and for this uh, night tonight to maybe not have coaches with their own um, players, but that's, that's kind of a juggle. So if that does happen, feel free if you'd like to um, pop into a different room. Your breakout is 75 minutes and it will end at nine o'clock. So thank you again for joining us. Have a good night and don't forget to speak up. Thank you.